The road to health has many twists and turns on this month's Healthy for the Long Haul discussion. KC welcomes experts to help iron out that long and winding road. Get it with your questions and comments for this month's guest. 8888 Road Dog. Savar is the CEO of Mother Trucker Yoga, a company devoted to improving truck driver fitness and wellness standards. She's joining us for this month's Healthy for the Long Haul segment. Hope, I hope you're well. How are you? I am. I, I had to giggle at your uh, intro and was like, and has nothing ever prepared. And I was like, oh, you know, this is why I like Casey so much, because that's sometimes how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> and we even had to say it twice. <laughs> you did. You did. And I, I like it. You know, just put it out there for everybody that yeah. this is how you operate, and then there's no problem. That's right. Yeah, well, so it's interesting that you point that out, because... Uh, we were talking about Nashville traffic today, Michael and I were, uh, before the show, and I was trying to explain when you're really late and you don't have anything ready for the show, that's when traffic's going to be worse in Nashville. And so I think that that recording came from one of those times that I ran in here with like 30 seconds left and I had not done any prep and Nashville traffic was bonkers. And I just started the show by saying, I got nothing. I don't have anything to talk about. You know, uh, sometimes it happens like that. I like it. I like it. You know, sometimes those are the best conversations. And uh, I'm excited to be here today and talk about what my passion is and how I can help the trucking industry. And uh, also, I just like talking with you, too, Casey. Ah, well, thank you for that. And I appreciate you coming on. So let's do that. Let's uh, start talking about health and wellness and what you do to that end. Uh, but first, let me uh, just ask, tell me who you are. Uh, what got you thinking about the need for yoga in trucking? Usually people are like yoga and trucking and they give me this like weird side eye. Um, well, I, well, I'm a recovering addict and I found yoga knee deep in addiction and I had never really heard even the term yoga. I was a teenager at the time. And, uh, for the first time ever, I really started to see that I could take my health back, uh, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally. And it was just like this step-by-step -step journey for me to be able to realize that, you know, people blame age that, you know, that's why they're not healthy anymore, or they blame their circumstances. And yoga kind of gave me this like pathway to say, hey, there are a lot of things that you can change and control in your life. And my health was one of them. And I worked in the yoga world for about 20 years, and I felt like I wanted to serve a greater population. My dad was a sewer pipe layer, like back in the day when it was like the true cowboys doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Yeah, yeah. And I watched him, and I watched him break his body. I mean, it would really, really break his body and not take care of himself. And so when trucking kind of fell into my lap, I just felt like this is where I belong. This is my home because I know these people. I know how hard this is on your body. I know the life you're living. I also know what it's like to feel unacknowledged and underserved um, because I watched that growing up my entire life. And so in trucking, just being able to show drivers how simple health and wellness is, everyone else is like, hey, do these exercises. Hey, you should follow this diet. And that's hard when you live on the road. And to be able to break that down for drivers and say, hey, you know, if all you do is drink one more bottle of water today, even if in the last two years you never drank any, so that means you're drinking one for the first time, that counts. If eating one vegetable and that's all you can do today, that counts. Doing one little quick exercise in the driver's seat while you're waiting to load or unload, that counts. We have to start somewhere, and I think that is one thing that is my goal for drivers, but is really how I look at health and wellness. Hopes of our joining us. If you guys want to get in, you got questions um, about yoga, uh, wellness, movement, activities, any of those types of topics. She'd love to have that call, as would I. 888-876-2336, Road Dog. And it's really amazing uh, that you share your story about your father because I am, uh, I, I have been in my life pretty active. However, um, recently I ruptured a tendon in my foot. And so um, I, I can identify with that story about your body starting to get to that point where it's 
breaking down because now that I had the ruptured tendon, I can't exercise like I usually would. So I'm not playing soccer anymore. Um, I start to favor that foot a little bit. So my back starts to hurt and then my neck starts to hurt. And then I lose, you know, got some feeling issues uh, because of nerve damage and those types of things. And my body right now, Hope, is uh, starting that process. So if, if you were in my shoes, what would you do to start undoing those years of damage? You know, one of the things I first we have to look at is really our our whole day as a routine. You know, when people look at fitness, let's just use the word fitness, a lot of times we're looking at, you know, exercise. Like I go to the gym or I go to yoga for 30 or 60 minutes, and then I check that box off. And, and what I'm proposing to not just truck drivers, but to anyone that's a human with a pulse, um, is that really look at your daily routine and where am I moving? Where can I insert more movement in? So even with like a ruptured tendon in your foot, you can still move your arms and shoulders, right? Like you can still rotate your neck, right? Hold, hold on, let me check. In a chair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, okay. I can still do that, yes. Uh, you know, you can still, you know, maybe somewhat, you know, bend forward, whether standing or in a chair. And so it's really about mobility, because when I get drivers asking me a lot, Hope, how do you help? Can you help me increase my flexibility? But the flip side is, is I've met people that have all the flexibility and then some, but are in pain 24 seven because they can't keep their body upright. And when we look at mobility, we're looking at joint health. And if you know anybody in their 80s or 90s, you know, what, what's the challenge? They, they can't walk. They shuffle around. They can't move their body, their joints. And so to age healthy, whether you have a tendon injury or maybe you just weren't good to yourself over the last couple of years, how is it that I can add more mobility into my day? And that is looking at the joints in the body. So one of the things that I would challenge you or anyone to do is when you wake up in the morning, before you get out of the bed at all, I love double downing on movements, before you get out of bed at all, I want you to go through your body and move your joints, like move your toes, roll your ankles. Can you move your knees? Can you, you know, bend your knees and drop your legs side to side, kind of like windshield wipers? Can you roll your wrists, open and close your hands? Can you twist your torso? Can you roll your shoulders, turn your neck? Those are all joints. And if you don't use them, you do lose them. And the good news is, is if you start moving them, you, you can regain them back. But that is something that we all should be doing. But so many of us aren't, because what do we do? We sit all day. We blame it on how busy we are. But yeah, these are things we can easily incorporate into our everyday life. Hearing you talk about the um, the things you can do before you even get out of bed. It makes me think of the driver's pre-trip. This is like a pre-trip on a driver's mobility and, and their day. Yes. Just basically taking yes. inventory of, hey, where where does it hurt today? Uh, I know that in my experience, uh, there are certain things that hurt um, almost every day, my foot being one of them right now. Um, so everything else seems to be doing okay, but then throughout the day, uh, it didn't, tends to get progressively worse. So, uh, yeah, that's a really good tip. Uh, and you mentioned uh, the hydration. Uh, you mentioned eating one vegetable. How important uh, is diet uh, in your mobility? Oh, diet is essential, but I, I approach it very practically. So with many drivers or, you know, people that were even in like my dad's position where he was, you know, your the job is the focus. And so what do we do? What are a lot of the generation that is one generation above me? We were taught self-sacrifice, like sacrifice your health, your wellness to get the job done. And that's like the badge of honor. But the only problem with that is the repercussion is always negative. It's usually rarely positive. And so when we look at diet as a part of, you know, aging healthy and improving mobility, your joints, if we just look at joints, because remember, if your joints don't move, you don't have mobility. And so our joints really require hydration. There's a little capsule inside there that when you move it, it self lubricates. But also when you drink something like water, let's say, you are also lubricating your tissues in your body as well. So if a driver has not drank any water at all, I mean, and you're drinking coffee and Monster and Mountain Dew, and sure, you can laugh all you want, but you're the one that's losing. Your body will do everything it can 
to try to get the job done, but eventually you'll have these random things that you can't figure out. Like I'm getting cramps at night when I wake up and I, I don't know what's causing that. Or I just got out of the truck and like I pulled my back or, you know, now I, I'm, I'm having kidney problems all the time and I can't figure out why or migraines or brain fog or you can't sleep at night. Like what if not being able to sleep? has everything to do with hydration and nothing to do with the fact that you're a truck driver. Yeah, the very interesting. Um, when, it, when it comes down to it, are, are there supplements that people might think about if they're having uh, difficulty with joints? In, in addition to proper hydration, are there uh, some over-the-counter type of supplements that could be beneficial to joint health? Sure thing. I mean, always making sure you're getting enough calcium, always making sure, you know, you're getting your good, healthy fats and oils. Those are essential. But, you know, from a very practical, like, step through the doorway, step one. If you are listening to this and you're like, hmm, I maybe should start thinking about this because I'd like to be able to, you know, move around when I'm 80 and not be in a wheelchair. If that if that is a concern for you, which, you know, for me, my goal is to be able to not have a walker in a wheelchair for as long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, go, go realistic goals, right, people? That's right. Uh, and I think one thing is to think about is, am I hydrated enough during the day? Am I getting enough hydration for myself, and am I moving my body? I, I look at one of the biggest nutrients we are missing as a human race is the M vitamin. And the M vitamin is an essential vitamin, but yet many of us are not taking it. I've never it. heard and of that's it. Movement. That's oh, movement. Oh, <laughs> all right. Like that, right? Yeah, you now you're talking. <laughs> about it and so before you go to walgreens and buy vitamins that you're going to have to pass through anyways you know think about what can i be taking that doesn't cost me a lot because one of the things (laughs) i get from drivers is often i don't have the money for that or oh where am i going to access that well all you need is your body in order to move and i'm not talking about exercise people i'm not talking about having weights or a yoga mat. I mean, the yoga I teach drivers, I, I think, I don't think any of it really, I, I tell them they have to have a yoga mat. This is about you moving your body the way is it, it is designed to move. Because how we do some things is how we do most things. So if you just sit in the driver's seat all day long, you're probably sitting even after you're driving more than you realize. Mm. And so why not double down and start moving your body while you're driving. Like, no one is going to call you out if when you're driving, roll your shoulders 20 times backwards and 20 times forwards. And if you're like, well, that's silly. Well, I'd like to be able to move my shoulders when it counts most. Or when you're driving, why not roll one of your ankles or lift and lower your leg five times or rotate your torso right and left when you put on your seatbelt every single time or really make sure you look over your shoulder. One of the best worst inventions in a vehicle is a backup camera. Why? Because now you've just robbed the person from looking and yeah. rotating their neck the one time during the day that they actually will. And now they're not even doing that. And so are That's you fun. getting enough M vitamin in to your daily routine? Before you go and buy all those supplements that you're going to take for two days and then the bottle's going to sit for five years, why not just take the things that cost you very little but are absolutely essential is Water, am I hydrating enough? And movement, am I getting enough movement in? And then really just making sure, too, like what's the quality of my sleep? And I know that that's a big thing for a lot of drivers, but when we look at mobility and aging healthy, when our body is exhausted, it just tightens up. It is just like, please do not make me walk another mile. Mm-hmm. And that is when really we, we start to feel the effects of that. And so maybe it's not sleep for six or eight hours, but can I have some rest time? Can I have some downtime? Can I lay on my sleeper and like take my bag or take something and just elevate my feet so I can get that blood flow and I can get that lymph flow to come back towards my heart and the central part of my body again so my body can feel some relief? You guys, these are practical things that you can do in minutes a day. The question is, are you doing them? Very good. Hope, sit tight. We got to take a quick time out. Hope Zavara is the CEO of Mother Trucker Yoga. We're talking a little bit about movement, mobility, hydration, vitamin M. Uh, It's really uh, a great line. But when we get back, we're going to jump back into it with her. 888-876-DOG-LIVE. This is the August edition of the Healthy for the Long Haul segment. Hope Zavara, CEO of Mother Trucker Yoga, jumping in with us and having a chat. Hope, thanks for joining us. So, uh... 
We are back. Welcome back into Road Dog Live. This is the August edition of the Healthy for the Long Haul segment. Hope Zavara, CEO of Mother Trucker Yoga, jumping in with us and having a chat. Hope, thanks for joining us. So uh, you, oh, my mentioned, you, you mentioned uh, in the last segment about yoga mats. Uh, I, I think about my wife's um, journey with yoga. And she has a yoga mat. She has yoga blocks. Uh, she has purchased videos and things like that. So I, I know a lot of times whenever I think about starting any type of program, I'm curious about the expense uh, because yoga, I think, could be expensive if you wanted to get a bunch of uh, gear to help you get started. But it's relatively inexpensive, almost free. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yoga is a multi-billion dollar industry uh, as far as when it comes to yoga pants and blocks and the fanciest mats. And I mean, you're, you're, dropping, you're dropping some heavy cash. But when I started Mother Trucker Yoga, and I think this is what made me so different in the yoga world, teaching on different fitness stages and, and yoga stages for years, was that I have a very practical, realistic approach. I always have to health and wellness. It's just kind of in my nature. And my whole my whole idea for drivers is that you don't need any of that. Like be in your jeans and boots. Like be in, I don't care what you're in. And we joke it's no mat yoga because for a lot of people, and I think just humans in general, we run on this feeling of not enough time. And if we feel like something is going to take too much time or we can't edge right. out like the right amount of time, in our minds it's black or white. It's like, well, I can't do it today because I don't have 60 minutes and that's how long my yoga video is. Yeah. And it's like, well – you can still do some of it, but we don't typically think that way. And so for drivers, my whole approach is how do we break down what yoga can teach us, mobility, flexibility, stability, um, and just all over aging healthy into small little bite-sized pieces that a lot of times don't even look like yoga or don't even look like exercise, but it's just teaching you how to move more in your everyday life right where you are. And a lot of times that's the driver's seat. So I'm thinking of a couple of things. Number one, you need to develop a line of uh, yoga flannel. Uh, that that would probably be a big hit, especially for all your trucker friends. And then also uh, I'm wondering with regard to the trucking professional, do you find that there are specific ailments that are common amongst many drivers that talk to you about what their challenges are? Oh, hands down. I think back pain you know, uh, we survey drivers whenever I go to any truck shows or, or any type of events and we have a little card they fill out. And I, I would say 85% or more of drivers say that they have chronic back pain. Chronic is the word that we use when it's reoccurring. It doesn't go away. Back pain, you know, and some just say I have back pain, well, that could just be today. You know, they never had it before. So chronic back pain. Um, another one is like brain fog like the inability to focus. And this goes back to hydration. This goes back to, you know, movement because you're not, your blood's not flowing. You're not, you're, you're not circulating. No wonder at, you know, at 10 a.m. or 3 p.m. you're like starting to fall asleep. Well, that's because you're not moving and you're probably dehydrated. And so one of the number one reasons, if you're struggling with focus and concentration, um, you feel that cracking and popping, you feel stiff and tight, like hydration is a huge part of that because you're not self-lubricating, like you're not hydrating your tissues. Have you ever seen like an apple when you cut it and then you leave it on the counter for a day mm -hmm. and it gets that like weird skin on top? Like that's what's happening. It's losing its moisture. Mm -hmm. And as a result, it's starting to look all gnarly and it doesn't taste right. And it's kind of like, ugh. well, the same is true for our body. And so we need to start moving more. And that does not mean you have to exercise. That does not mean that you have to get out a yoga mat. This means that you have to look at your daily life from the moment you wake up, like we talked about the movements before you get out of bed, to the time you go to bed, where are pockets of time that you can insert more movement? And that is simple as rolling your wrists, stretching your hands out on the steering wheel, twisting your spine, you know, a few times each way when you're in the driver's seat, when you're filling up with fuel, you know, that's bending forward and just, you know, maybe reaching for your toes, even if you don't touch them or hands on the side of the truck and do a little half down dog. You're going to feel your pot spine click and pop. That's all that compression from sitting all day. Your body's like, thank you. This is all movement. This is all yoga. And guess what? This all counts. Amen. Uh, I, I have another question about staying motivated. Many times in my fitness journey, which right now, and I've told my wife, I, I really feel 
heavy. You, you know, I, I'm in that place where I haven't worked out. A lot of it has to do with my foot uh, injury, wanting it to rehab, but still having so many other responsibilities because I have to continue to work. Uh, I'm constantly on my feet. I'm not giving my body enough time, but I get in that place where I feel like I need to start something. But then I have another challenge is that's when I get started doing something. About a month in, I'm hitting that wall where I'm like, you know what? I'm just not motivated anymore because I've started to feel okay. I've That pudgy thought has kind of gone away and then I just get back right on the couch and I stop moving so much. How would you recommend that I stay motivated? I like to follow the 1% rule. I believe that many of us, we simply bite off too much that we can chew. Um, And although it's really good to have big goals, most people don't break down those big goals into small, tiny goals to help build momentum. And so the 1% rule is what is one thing that I can do every single day through hell or high water, and I can do that, and I can show up, and I can check that box. So at the end of the year, I'm 365% further along than where I was before. And this is why with drivers, I say just drink one bottle of water, one more than you're typically doing. I don't say drink 64 ounces because their eyes are going to bug out of their head. (laughs) If you've never been drinking water, that's like asking somebody that's never hiked to go and hike, like, the tallest mountain in in, uh, Colorado. Like, hello like that's scary I haven't trained for that I've never done anything like this before like I'm not going to do that and so how about one more bottle of water you know how about instead of just like I'm going to start exercising we've all said that to ourselves right and then we feel like a failure when we give up five weeks in five days in heck five minutes in and, and now we're like going the opposite way times 10 how about every single day For the next week, I'm just going to, like, move all my joints in my bed before I wake up. How about every single time I'm filling up with fuel, because I have to do that at least once a day, I am going to, you know, put my foot on the truck truck step and just kind of lunge forward and stretch my hip on each side for 10 seconds. I'm just going to do that every single time I fill up with fuel. Like, that's 1% better. And when we start feeling good and we start noticing that positive impact and mentally, psychologically, subconsciously, what that's telling us is you did it. You're committing to something. Good job, Casey. Good job, Hope. Good job, Dean. Good job, Cheryl. And that makes us want to do more when we see we can commit to something. So there's something happening on a much deeper level. When we just take a tiny little bite-sized piece of something and we commit to it, we're going to automatically start doing more and more and more. And so my suggestion to people is usually the opposite. Stop doing so much. Do less. But do it consistently. Yes. Be deliberate about what you choose to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. All right. Well, I uh, hope perfect. we are out of time, but I do want to uh, talk very quickly about your book, Trucking Yoga, Simple Fitness for the Long Haul. Um, great book. I've looked through it. It's got great illustrations. Very simple to follow. Where can folks find that? Yeah, you can find uh, Trucking Yoga, Simple Fitness for the Long Haul on Amazon. You can grab it over on our website, mothertruckeryoga.com. If you're looking for an easy-to-follow guide, something you can just open and go, I could do that, and you're not sure where to start, uh, check it out, Trucking Yoga, Simple Fitness for the Long Haul, Amazon, our website, mothertruckeryoga.com, and you can start getting moving today. Hope, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks, Casey. All right. You be good. That is Hope Zavara, CEO of Mother Trucker Yoga. Check her book out, uh, Amazon.com. It is going to change your life, but you have to take that first step, just like I do. Pudgy boy.